bow down before you, O God, and shall sing to you, shall sing to your name, O Most High. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. We we'll welcome you to this live stream Mass on Facebook for the second Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year B. And we're offering this Mass for the repose of the soul of John Ireland. And Father Rajesh is celebrating Mass back in Seaford in the house for the repose of the soul of Nick Hansen. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory on in excelsis Deo. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel was lying in the sanctuary of the Lord, where the ark of God was, when the Lord called. Samuel, Samuel, he answered, Here I am. Then he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, since you called me. Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Once again the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, since you called me. He replied, I did not call you, my son. Go back and lie down. Samuel had as yet no knowledge of the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Once again the Lord called the third time. He got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, since you called me. Eli then understood that it was the Lord who was calling the boy, and he said to Samuel, Go and lie down, and if someone calls, say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord then came and stood by, calling as he had done before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, and let no word of his fall to the ground. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I waited, I waited for the Lord, and he stooped down to me. He heard my cry. He put a new song into my mouth, praise of our God. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. You do not ask for sacrifice and offerings, but an open ear. You do not ask for holocaust and victim. Instead, here am I. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. In the scroll of the book it stands written that I should do your will. May God, I delight in your law, in the depth of my heart. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Your justice I have proclaimed in the great assembly. My lips I have not sealed. You know it, O Lord. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. A reading from the first letter of St Paul to the Corinthians. The body is not meant for fornication, it is for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. God, who raised the Lord from the dead, will by his power raise us up too. You know surely that your bodies are members making up the body of Christ, Anyone who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Keep away from fornication. All the other sins are committed outside the body, but to fornicate is to sin against your own body. Your body, you know, is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you since you received him from God. You are not your own property. You have been bought and paid for. That is why you should use your body for the glory of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. two of his disciples, Jesus passed, and John stared hard at him and said, Look, there is the Lamb of God. Hearing this, the two disciples followed Jesus. Jesus turned round, saw them following, and said, What do you want? They answered, Rabbi, which means teacher, where do you live? Come and see, he replied. So they went and saw where he lived, and stayed with him the rest of that day. It was about the tenth hour. One of these two who became followers of Jesus after hearing what John had said was Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter. Early next morning, Andrew met his brother and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means the Christ. And he took Simon to Jesus. Jesus looked hard at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, meaning rock. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord does not call just a few special people, but he calls everyone, having a vocation in mind for each one of us. 
we must spend time in prayer, discerning that call, because there will come a time when we must respond. Here I am, for you have called me. Samuel shows us true obedience. With help, he has listened to the Lord, and knowing it to be true, responds positively and provides the right attitude for every spiritual person. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. By listening, we cultivate a relationship with God. He hears our prayers, giving us the grace needed to live out our vocation, that of service of God, his church, and his holy people. Living out a vocation requires behaviour fitting to our calling. And this is true whether we are single, married, religious, or in holy orders. For instance, impurity is not a natural need for the body. It is not the same need that the body, body has for food, for instance. Remember, as St Paul teaches us, the body is for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And at holy baptism, the body became a temple for the Holy Spirit to reside in. And at the resurrection, God will raise our mortal bodies after the pattern of his own glorious body, as we reside in the new heavens and the new earth. The Church continues to teach that sexual relations are properly ordered to marriage. And although many people marry, it is not actually an automatic right, because it is a vocation. It is the initiative of God who has chosen the couple for marriage, so that he may bring them to holiness and be a sign to the world of Christ the Bridegroom, who so loved his bride, the Church, that he gave his body up for her, so that she may be holy and blameless before him. God's grace orientates the whole person, body and soul, to heaven. As with all other temptations, we need willpower to overcome our passions. And when we're struggling, we need to unite our passions to the passion of Jesus Christ, lest they run away from us. And St Paul reminds us that we were redeemed at a very high price with the precious blood of Jesus. We should be vigilant in what we say, think and do because we glorify God with our bodies and with our minds. This is challenging in an age which bombards us with overly sexualized messages, but we must have the courage and the strength to switch off or switch over so that we may avoid the occasions of sin. And when we confess our sins in the Sacrament of Reconciliation, we not only deal with the offence caused, but we are strengthened against further lapses. That's why more regular confession is always better than simply going once a year. As we are about to embark once again on the week of prayer for the unity of Christians, the Gospel shows how John the Baptist does not cling on to his own disciples, but points out Jesus to them. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Our mission is to bring people into full communion with Christ and his church. A continual invitation for people to come and see and to encounter the Lord in the sacraments so that they may enjoy God's friendship. The hours that these first disciples spent talking with the Lord was surely a very good preparation for their future apostolate. Faith is not just a matter of intellectual curiosity because it affects the whole person, body and soul. And our redemption is not just spiritual, but it is also cor corporal. It will only be complete when we get our bodies back. Hence St Paul writing on the body which is part of the body of Christ, the Church. And it is our destiny to be made part of the Church triumphant in heaven, where we will experience true peace. On this 
Peace Sunday, we reflect that peace is not the absence of conflict, but the fullness of blessing that is being found in right relationship with God. Being at peace with God in our conscience allows us to be patient with others because we are all too aware of our own limitations and weaknesses. This allows our instinct to not to be one of retribution, but of forgiveness, and it allows us to imitate our Lord and declare, peace be with you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of the sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord above. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father. Almighty and eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being, and while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heart. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Mary Magdalene, St. Martha, St. Richard, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, 
Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Richard our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, for whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. You have prepared a table before me, and how precious is the chalice that quenches my thirst. Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness, make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm hoping and praying that tomorrow the parts for the boilers will arrive, 
and then the engineer from the manufacturer will come and be able to fix them. Never any guarantees in this business, but let's hope that uh, we'll get some resolution this week, for St Mary Magdalene at least. He's then going to go down to St Martha's and also diagnose, plug his laptop in and diagnose what's wrong with the boiler at St Martha's. Um, it's an unbelievably big boiler. It's all about computers. Um, you could probably start a small war with them if you knew what you were doing. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.